Good morning, how are you? Difficult case today. Um, this is uh, an upper right six, and these types of cases are cases that straight away um, pique my interest or or set off my uh, little in anxiety switches in my head. Um, this 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 type of case today is something that isn't um, just like you run in the mill uh, root canal. Okay, so there's a few things when I look at this tooth um, that are. Um, that, that make it a difficult case to complete and also for the prognosis to be good and for it to survive over a long period of time. The, the, the first problem with this tooth uh, I'm seeing here, so if we look at the x-ray, we've got this upper right six, we've got, um, it's, it's, it's got a questionable prognosis, so it's got quite a bit of decay. In the first instance, we're going to have to remove this filling and just assess its restorability. Um, and we can see that there's quite a bit of bone loss around this tooth as well. So that's another thing we need to take into consideration. Um, you know, um, finally, we look at the roots. So uh, I think early in my career, I used to look at um, mesobuccal roots and distobuccal roots and think, oh, they're looking a bit small. You know, is there resorption here? But usually in these types of cases, it's either just the orientation of the x-ray or this is just normal. But my eyes immediately... Um, look straight at the palatal here so we've got um, quite a little bit of uh, chronic infection around this palatal root and it looks as if what we've got a little bit of blunting and maybe we've got um, an open apex so an open apex isn't a major issue for a, for a dentist who likes root canal likes doing root canal all the time in anterior teeth because you can see um, the, the 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 canal pretty easily, um, but an open apex in a, 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 in a in a molar tooth can provide quite a challenge. Okay, because usually there's ac access problems. Usually with palatal roots, sometimes um, there's like a like a bend in the root, so it's difficult to see the end. And also we need to think about the maxillary sinus. So before we even start this case, we need to be very very clear with the patient about the restorability of this tooth the difficulty in cleaning and shaping the tooth obviously if you've got an open apex um, you know um, controlling the irrigant um, and also the obturation can can be can be difficult okay so in the first instance what I'm gonna do here is I am gonna remove the old amalgam filling and then I'm gonna place my own uh, filling in place and when we look in the tooth here intraorally, the, the amalgam filling actually doesn't look too too bad. And, and I suppose this is um, um, a vote really for always taking bite wing radiographs because, you know, intraorally that, that looks all right. That doesn't it? It's a little all right tooth. But actually, it, you know, you take a, a bite wing or we take a, a PA, you can see obviously that there's decay underneath this, uh, this filling. And as we remove the filling and the, the decay, um, I noticed that the tooth adjacent to it is has got decay. Now, if we look at the X-ray again, um, we can see obviously there's decay there, but it just shows you with with hindsight and context that you get to see more things um, intraorally um, and on the X-ray. So, what I did for the patient here is I just um, very very quickly uh, popped the filling in. It's nice and easy doing a filling like this because I didn't have to drill through the top of the tooth. I could just sort of directly do the filling. So um, what I'm doing now is I am uh, placing a sectional matrix. I'm using Garrison. You'll notice that I'm not in using rubber dam, but um, I think in this case, I was happy just to place the, the filling without uh, rubber dam in this case. And then there's quite a significant gap um, in the margin with this uh, with this filling. So what I'm doing here is I like to stack wedges. So with a paladent system, the, the wedges are kind of like V-shaped and you can sort of stack the wedges in it pushes that sort of sectional matrix further into the uh, into the into the sort of contact point there and we just do a bit of etching bonding and I'm just using also an instrument here just to mold the matrix band onto the um, mesial aspect of the other tooth to make sure that obviously when we pull this sectional matrix off and um, we've got a nice contact point and it's just super super simple you know i'm using a flowable composite at the base of the cavity just to flow into all the nooks and crannies and then i'm just using a normal um you know bog standard composite filling material here um and uh, just just like a it's like a um, what would you call this like a little bit of a plugger just to sort of um, uh, mold the composite here into a um, into a filling and 
once we put the, the rubber dam on, we can see here that we've got a nice um, uh, sort of access cavity. So we've sorted out the, the access. We've got it all nicely sealed off. Now what I'm going to do is just going to fill the access cavity with uh, irrigant, and then I'm going to go straight for the palatal and just take a working length measurement. And, and um, as suspected, this um, file went straight down to length very, very easily. So we've got the uh, palatal working length. It's uh, 22 millimeters. And I'm going to go straight for the master, master apical file here. Um, I'm going to use a, a size 25 high flex uh, minus 0.5 millimeters from the working length found on the apex locator. And um, as predicted, this goes right to length. I'm not worried about it. And it's essentially the same shaping protocol for the mesi buckle and the distal buckle. We're going to take the working length and then shape it nicely. And then we're using the final uh, master, master apical file, 0.5 millimeters from the working length. So all three canals are shaped now, and now we're kind of assessing the MB2. And um, this is the benefit of using a microscope. You can say uh, pretty easy that there's an MB2 uh, just in this sort of position here. So we're gonna use a size 10K file just to try and negotiate the uh, the, 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 the MB2. And, and I'm having a little bit of difficulty here. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and shape as far as I can get, measure how far I've got, and that is seen to be 17.5 millimeters. So that's as far as I can get with my hand file. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a kind of a step back approach. So I'm gonna use my high flex glide path file at 16 millimeters, and I'm gonna try and open up this canal a little bit. And then I'm gonna use um, an even larger diameter file. In this case, I'm using a 25 high flex, around 15 to 14 millimeters. So I'm gonna step back two millimeter uh, a millimeter each time i use a higher diameter and usually what this does is it opens up um the the canal space for us to try and get down this canal and i had a kind of suspicion that maybe um the mb1 and the mb2 uh, joined or there was confluence so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get a gp point in the mb1 and then i'm going to get my um, uh, I'm going to get a D finder, so this is different to a K file, and I'm going to measure it about 17.5, and then I'm going to put this uh, like a little uh, hook on the end of this D finder, and I'm going to put it into the MB2, and I'm going to very, very slowly um, negotiate down the MB2, and if there's a join, what it'll do is it'll mark uh, the GP point. So I'm going to just remove the GP here, and off camera, check the GP point, there's no mark. So there's no obvious confluence or joining. And I'm just gonna use the D finder now to try and negotiate a bit further. And it, and it does start to advance. And um, and I get to about 19 millimeters before it starts to get a bit sticky. So what, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use that step back approach again. I'm gonna use a higher diameter file. I'm gonna use this size 10K file to further open up the canal. Remember, if you open up the canal, it stops the, the, the file from binding. And then I'm gonna use um, this high flex glide path file at 18 millimeters. Remember, we're stepping back just to open it up. And we're gonna we're gonna after we've opened up the canal, we're gonna use the size eight D finder again. And what we find is this D finder is now starting to get to length, and we've got a nice zero reading on this MB two. So this MB two has got a zero reading in nineteen point five, and we know that the MB two has got a separate portal of exit to the MB one. So we're gonna we're gonna shape. Um, that using our um, normal shaping protocol and we're going to arbitrate it separately. Um, again, got to be really careful with these MB2s because they can be really, really narrow and obviously the risk of file fracture in these cases and also ledging is, is higher. So just be very mindful of that. So we're going to do the cone fit radiograph here. And um, I know that the, uh, the palatal um, uh, canal is... Is, is wider than a 25. I, I know that straight away. I don't need to check that. I don't need to take a 25 GP point out and waste it. So what I am going here to do here now is I'm going to use a higher diameter and tapered uh, um, uh, cone. Okay, so um, I'm using high flex, but what I'm using um, for this palatal cone fit is I'm just going to use a Wave 1 Gold 45. And as I um, fit this Wave 1 Gold uh, 45 uh, GP point to length, I know for a fact that it pushes longer than the, uh, the, the working length. And I'm just going to 
adjust the diameter of this um, GP point uh, up to 50. So just a, the next one up. Um, in it, and what this does is as we push the GP uh, to length, it fits then nicely, snugly at the working length. Now, I must admit, in this case, I've snipped off the GP and it's fit to the right working length straight away. And usually it doesn't work like that. Usually you have to go up in little increments until you get to the working length. But as you can see here with the measurements, it's at uh, 21.5. So we know that that's 0.5 millimeters away from the working length. And that palatal cone is at the correct length. And we're just gonna um, snip off the end and then use the same kind of protocol for the MB1 and the MB2. And you can see here that the um, the radiograph where the disc DB um, cone fit looks um, appropriate and the MB1, the MB2 look fine. But if we take a, a closer look here, we can see the palatal, I think, is a little bit longer than I'd like. So if I annotate here on where I think the end of the, the root is and where the, the GP is, you can see that we're, we're, just, we're just a little bit longer than we'd like to. So in this case, um, what I've done is I have removed all the GP points. I have just ever so slightly snipped the end of um, the palatal GP point and then took a, another um, another comb fit and as you can see it looks like it's at the length okay I think what's really really important in these types of cases and I get these from um, from from dentists all the time from newly qualified dentists or dentists that are, are are training is that you know they 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 take the comb fit radiograph um, it's long and then they adjust it and then they always say oh should I take another comb fit I always take a comfort radiograph and, and that is rightly or wrongly that's just my opinion I just feel like it always has to be correct because the worst thing for you to do is to snip it see what happens put it in fill it all up take the post up and it looks awful so I'll, I'll always take a comfort almost always and then once we know the cones are all the right length and it's all looking all hunky-dory uh, what we're going to do now is our final shaping protocol we're going to use um uh, sodium hypochlorite i use two percent personally some people might think that's a bit weak but i use copious amounts of that i think it's a good way up for um safety um as long as you use lots and lots of it and it's activated as well and i'm using edta uh, activated and we're going to dry all our canals and uh, we're ready for obturation and um, again, if you are a, a regular viewer of our uh, channel, uh, we use these visco tips and a bioceramic sealer just to fill up uh, these canals. And I like to make sure I get lots and lots of bioceramic sealer into these canals. And then I like to fit the cones nice and nice and slowly to length. Okay, what I don't want to do is I don't want to ram home the GP point. Um, I want to just very, very sort of gently push it in. And what that um, helps with is it helps with the sort of, uh, um, you can get a sort of um, a vapor lock with some of this, these types of um, bioceramic sealers. And the, the GP point can sort of bob up and down if you don't, if you don't, if you push it too quickly. And um, we look at the, 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 the final PA and um, yeah, I'm really, 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 really happy. I've, um, you know, if, I'm, if I've got my really, really critical hat on, maybe there's a couple of little voids here and there, but overall, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this obturation. And this is a really, really unusual um, tooth because it's got um, two problems at the opposite ends of the spectrum. So we've got a very, very wide open um, palatal canal, and then we've got uh, the mesobuccal canals, which is which are like super, super narrow. And this is why you need to not um, sort of when you approach root canal, you don't want to um, have a, a one size fits all kind of approach because what works with really really wide open teeth don't work with um, very very uh, sclerosed or calcified canals or small canals and vice versa essentially um you know there's an argument to say maybe the db is is short but again if you're a regular viewer of my uh, channels 
um, you'll notice that um, this has been checked with an apex locator and I would suspect or strongly suspect that this is at the working length okay because there is always that discrepancy between the working length or the the anatomical apex and the radiographic apex so I'm really really happy with this case and there we have it so if you have any questions or any criticisms, if you think you should have done this case a little bit differently, please comment in the section below. Um, we have a membership program if you're interested. The membership program gives you access to exclusive content and it also helps with the running of the channel and it just shows you support. And I will see you next week with the next exciting video. Okay, bye-bye.